Well, hello there, everybody. It's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. And if you have never been here before, I am so happy to have you and welcome to the Save the Crafty YouTuber video hop. I know I'm pretty late on the hop list, so I don't want to bore you with all the details that you've heard a million times already, like how this benefits so many talented people in the craft industry. But I did want to remind you to comment on this video and each video on the hop. You can continue along with the link in the description. There's tons of prizes from companies that you see up on the screen right now and many more. I myself am giving away $25 to Ellen Hudson. So be sure to leave a comment and like and subscribe if you feel so inclined and you like what you see. So let's just go ahead and get started into what I'll be showing today. And that is how to create the easiest watercolor wash ever. Also the prettiest, just saying, but I guess that is a matter of opinion. So to recreate this technique, you'll need some Tombow dual brush pens or really any water-based marker or pencil. You'll also need a paintbrush or a water brush like I'm using. Also a low tack tape to adhere your watercolor paper or cardstock to your surface. And then of course, some watercolor paper. I am using Arches cold press watercolor paper today because I splurged on some, so why not? But really any watercolor paper or watercolor cardstock will do. I also showed distress watercolor cardstock because I really like that it's smooth on one side. And I think that would actually be really great for this technique. So right now what I'm doing is adhering my cardstock, which is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half, which is an A2 size card uh, size. I will end up trimming this down a bit, but I'm adhering it to my work surface. The reason that I'm doing this is because I want it to prevent warping. And when you hold or when you adhere this down, it will prevent it from curling up. Like you could imagine some cardstock or paper doing if you were to put water on it. So in succession, I am using Tombow Colors 636 uh, 725, 933, and 055. And really all I am doing is scribbling these colors in succession. So I'm going from the darkest to the lightest. And what I want to do is also overlap just a tiny bit, but not too much. I don't want any white space in between because I really want this ombre effect or this watercolor wash look to be cohesive. And I don't want any spaces in the middle. So after I go ahead and scribble my colors onto there, I'm going to take this water brush and make sure that I squeeze quite a bit of water out. Now, if you're using a regular paintbrush, you want to pick up quite a bit of water because you want this to wash together. I actually do end up going over this quite a few times and you'll see that in the video. But what I also want to make sure I don't do is go upward. I don't want to bring any of those colors the opposite way because I want this wash to go in one direction from the top to the bottom. And also if I do it from darkest to lightest, these colors will blend in together. If I bring that purple down to the yellow or if I go right from purple to yellow, I'm going to get some muddy brown colors. So I just want to make sure that I go in succession from top to bottom, from darkest to lightest. Now I go ahead and hit that with my heat gun just to make sure that it's completely dry before I take off this tape. And the best way that I have found to remove a low tack tape even from your cardstock and not have any tears is to pull it back on itself all the way down. And look at this vibrant, beautiful watercolor wash that I have. I was able to achieve this look without any real watercolor technique at all. And I really love the vibrancy and the way that it turned out. For the card itself, I used some images from the Altenew wallpaper art stamp set, as well as the hay dyes and a sentiment from the stamp market. For my next card, I wanted to do a more traditional watercolor wash look, which is more of like an ombre or a dip dyed look. So in succession, I'm going to be doing colors 528, 443, 452 and 451. And again, I'm just doing the same thing. I'm just scribbling down on this paper. And here I really want to make sure though, because I want this all to blend really well together and look like an ombre effect that I want to go over the previous color with my lighter color. So I'm really combining the two colors that are touching together so that when I go in with my water brush, I get a really nice blend. I want all of the colors to almost look like the other one, just that it's faded a little bit, which is exactly what ombre is. So now I'm going to go ahead and take my water brush. I'm going to put a lot of water down on the cardstock and then just run it again from top to bottom. 
Again, a good thing to keep in mind here is to not go backwards, uh, bottom to top, and to definitely make sure that you don't bring your darkest color into your lightest color since you're going for a nice faded ombre look. Again, I hit it with my heat gun just to make sure it's all dry. And as you can see, I did not do as well of a job at adhering my cardstock down because I did get a little mess there on the margins. Uh, but other than that, it looks beautiful. I cut this piece down to three and three quarters by five inches, and I love the way that it looks. I ended up making this a holiday themed card. I used some stamps from my favorite things because I absolutely love this font and it was a nice big sentiment. So I used deck the halls and sweet winter wishes to get that snow effect. I just used some white gouache, which I have some videos on if you do want to see a little bit more about that, but all in all, I love the way that these washes came out. And again, I may be a little biased, but I really do think that these are the easiest and the most beautiful washes, watercolor washes that I've ever gotten. Thank you so much again for stopping by. Please continue along with our hop at the link in the description. And all of the supplies are listed in the description as well as Justine Hovey's blog, where all of the winners will be announced on June 10th and June 5th is your last day to submit a comment for winning. Please like and subscribe if you liked what you saw and I will see you again very soon. Thank you so much. Bye.